In my last video we took a look at this, the RS4851M2S from EP Ever, which is a product designed to connect to both a solar charge controller and an inverter and be able to be monitored by two separate devices as uh, suggested here on the silk screen by your PC, by an MT meter, the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth or the e-log but uh, it also works with uh, homebrew solutions as well. But near the end of that video, I explained that the RS485 protocol, well, it's a bus network. You just connect devices to that network and they can all start communicating with each other. So I wondered whether this was truly necessary and I said I'd found something on AliExpress which I'd like to give a go. And here's the module here. Uh, on the silk screen, it's referred to as the Well Long RJ45-4. I don't think I searched for Well Long on AliExpress though, but uh, it's just got four RJ45 connectors on it and, um, well, a terminal block at the top and, uh, well, all the pin 1s are parallel together, all the pin 2s are parallel together and so on and so forth. Um, there is the option here with these through hole, plated through holes here to actually uh, disconnect pin 1 from this terminal block and I guess you could rewire it with that as well but uh, that's no interest to me. I'm mainly interested in the four RJ45 ports which are in parallel. So the simple and straightforward experiment here is to take the uh, communication cable from my solar charge controller and the one from my inverter here and just connect them in parallel and see if the MT75 and perhaps the MT50 still work in that configuration. So without further ado, I will take the uh, solar charge controller cable, plug that into port one. I'll take the uh, inverter cable and plug that into port two. That seems to find no trouble there. And then I'm gonna take this cable, which I've dropped on the floor, uh, which is the MT75. And I'll plug it in there. And uh, we can see the MT75 is reading my battery voltage. It's reading the solar voltage, that sort of thing. And uh, if I go through this button at the bottom, um, I haven't actually got a load on the inverter. So it is showing zero amps and zero volts because it doesn't until you have a load. So yeah, that seems like that is working absolutely fine. Good. Now with the MT75 seemingly working fine, can I plug in the MT50 as well, which is the best visual aid I have to show whether it's working across two different devices. And uh, yes, yes it is. It's working absolutely fine. All four devices, remember, because I've got a solar charge controller and an inverter, and these two meters are all happily connecting on the same RS485 bus with a very cheap module that just connects pin one to pin one and pin two to pin two and etc. etc. And they all seem to be working absolutely fine. So here we have it, everything seems to be working. Well, it does. But I have seen a couple of small issues, I'm afraid. Firstly, every so often the MT75 meter comes up with an error, an error on the screen. It's clearly having an issue communicating. I imagine what's happening at that point is uh, the MT50 is also trying to communicate with the uh, controller at the same time. And because the bus is busy, the MT75 comes up with that error. That's a pretty minor problem because a few seconds later it fixes itself, it gets the communication and it's quite happy. It does break the question however that if we have two different devices, not the MT uh, meters, we have uh, uh, the e-log or the e-wi-fi or a homebrew RS45485 sorry, solution 
Uh, will that error more often? I don't know. I've not tested it that well so far. But the other issue I'm having is, uh, well, it's a little bit more noticeable here in the shed, but I've also, hopefully, think I might have come up with a fix for it. To look at the other issue, I'm back looking at my solar charge controller and my inverter, of which those uh, modules and monitors are both connected. As you can see here, everything is powered on and everything seems to be working fine. That is until I turn my inverter off because, well, I don't leave it on all the time. So if I turn that inverter off now on the side, you can see there's an error light there and we have a beep. So what that's telling me now is that although the inverter power is off, the module inside of here is being powered through the RS485 connector and uh, probably powered, well, absolutely powered by the uh, solar charge controller. Now, as you can see, that beeping has stopped, but the error light is still flashing. So yeah, that's not ideal. I don't want this to be powered up when, well, when I've turned it off. So the fix for this sort of phantom power problem seems fairly straightforward. I need three of these ports all to share the five volt rail and one to be disconnected from it. The solar charge controller can then provide the power to the two meters or communication devices and the third one, the inverter, provides no power, which has the advantage that when it's turned off, it doesn't absorb any power either. So that should fix this issue. The problem with this module is all these ports are connected together on the top side of this PCB. On the bottom, you can see that these connectors go through to that first port, but then there's no commoning at all on the back so it's going to be very difficult to get in there and uh, cut any of these tracks to uh, disable the five volts from any one of these ports so well i thought well i'll just copy this module i'll make my own pcb which is exactly what i've done and here they are still in the bag very simply just four rj45 ports I've added in that uh, the um, connector at the top. I thought it might come in useful one day. I guess you could inject five volts externally, couldn't you? Rather than actually using the power from the solar charge controller or the inverter. Uh, but all those ports are just in parallel. The only difference with this is uh, the five volts comes in here and uh, I've put some pin headers so that you can connect the five volts or disconnect the five volts. It's as simple as that. So uh, I just need to make one of these up, really, don't I? Well, I made a mistake there, didn't I? Didn't check that was flat. Oh well, it's ever so slightly raised, but you'll forgive me that, won't you? Uh, right, fourth time of fitting these. Let's get these soldered in. And uh, these are going to be quite nice to solder, I think, because they're held in by these plastic pins. Um, they should just happily sit down. And there won't be any messing around so just the uh, 32 pins of the rj45 connectors to do and then we're done good i think that's done so now I can just use some of these jumpers here. It's the weather for jumpers, isn't it? Uh, so I only need three. Um, we will connect this one, bottom right. 
this one, bottom left, and this one, top left. And uh, yeah, we'll leave the top right one, which I'll plug the inverter into, uh, disconnected. Good, let's get the cables. Quick test to make sure there's no shorts. Well, actually, pins one and two should be. Yeah, but the rest of them should not. So, yeah, quick test. Everything. Random test. Yeah, that seems fine. There's definitely no uh, short across 5 volt and ground. Yeah, should be good. Right then, so uh, we'll connect the uh, solar charge controller up there to my port one uh, the inverter to the one that has no five volts good no errors no beeps no bangs and then not got enough hands here i'll get an mt50 and connect that up there it's got power Seems to be connecting to my Tracer 2210, uh, 2210A and is communicating. Now let me grab the MT75 and let's plug in the MT75. And that is working also. Oh, controller over temp. Oh, no. I mean, it's quite chilly in the, f in the uh, shed here. That said controller over temperature, didn't it? But no, it's communicating. Is it communicating with my um, inverter, which I've just switched off by pressing the wrong button. Um, DC side, AC side, 230 volts. So yeah, everything is working as it should. And now we can prove that my uh, 5 volt disconnection through my module here stops that issue with the inverter. So here we are then, everything's still connected up through that module and uh, if I turn this one off, no errors, no beeps, no warning lights, good, that seems to be working. And with the inverter off you can see I'm not getting any information from the inverter on the AC side now. Both my monitoring devices are still working. Everything is still connected. And uh, yeah, that seems to have been a success. I guess I'll use this for a while, see how well it works for me and uh, report back. But uh, yeah, thanks to the uh, well long module for the inspiration. And uh, yeah, my little board oops, seems to work reasonably well. Good. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, if you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, comment if you can, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.